Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today's episode is going to be amazing because I have the awesome Lindsay Smith joining me today. And we are talking all about just authenticity in your copy, in your writing, in what you're putting out to the world. And that's something I know a lot of us struggle with, myself included. So we are going to dive into this topic and so much more today. And with that being said, Lindsay, welcome into the podcast. Thanks, Amy. So excited. I am am so excited. Like we have connected on social media and I just love everything about you and I adore you. But before we dive in, tell us all more about yourself, who you are, what you do and who you serve. Um, yeah, I, well, I equally, I'm a big fan of yours too. Um, so yes, I'm Lindsay. I live in Canada and I'm a copywriter and a content pro. So what that means is that I write web copy for other people. Usually, um, usually people come to me because they've DIY their website, like they've written their copy themselves and they're kind of like, okay, this isn't working. So usually, um, I help them do that. And then on the content side, I teach other people to create content for their business. And it's really with a focus on, um, just like simplicity. And I feel like so many entrepreneurs, like creating content is like making them cuckoo. So it's the way I teach it is a bit different. I sort of call myself like a rebel content teacher because I'm not teaching like, you know, the same strategy over and over and over again. It's really a focus on, um, you know, kind of like mental health and content because I feel like so many of us, we just get caught up in this like nonsense and it's making us all crazy. Yeah, it really is. You know, and this is something you and I have talked about before is, you know, when somebody says that we should be doing something like, oh, you should be doing this on social, you should be doing that. I feel like that really has an impact on our mental health because then we're like, oh my gosh, I need to do what she's doing. And then we go down this like comparison hole and imposter syndrome and all of those icky things. Uh But like you show up on social media like in such a truly authentic way. And I love how you call yourself a rebel content teacher because (laughs) yeah, when we step into that role though, as just showing up as ourselves, it doesn't feel as icky and weird and spammy. What's your Mm -hmm. take on that? Yeah. And I, like, if you've been hanging around me a while, you know that I say, just stop shitting all over yourself because that word should makes me crazy. And I think like, you know, strategy is not going anywhere, right? Like there's all kinds of people. The strategy is not going anywhere. It's, you can, like that part is easy. I think the hard part about content is like what you said, is really tuning into that, um, you know, like that those little nudges of inspiration and really trusting that you have your own voice and that you can use it. And really that's sort of at the crux of my whole business is really that like, you know, and I love working with women. And really like one of my brand values is that every woman entrepreneur has a voice and it deserves to be heard. And I think, um, you know, and I've talked about this a lot, like for sure, there's all kinds of like prescriptions. You can, you can download some random template for $7, follow, you know, this, 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 this is the exact strategy I use to, to, to create content that converts and da, 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 or you know, sure, you can follow this, but what feels better? Or you can follow this path of just listening to your own voice and your own intuition and your own creative genius. Um, And I feel like that path just feels so much better. And it's my experience and my client's experience when you learn to trust those little creative nudges and create content from that place, like that's the content that makes more impact. And that's, to me, it's that impact that, you know, you start to, to accumulate these like fans, right? And then the fans are the ones that are going to buy your product or service from you. So 
I think this whole like content that converts thing, like maybe that was a thing, like maybe 10 years ago, right? Like you throw some content up and people buy stuff from you, but it's not, that's not the game anymore. I don't think. Yeah. That's my two. That's my but two doing, cents. doing exactly that and listening to our own voice. I mean, that's hard to do because it's so noisy mm-hmm. out there. But honestly, I feel like that's the secret to rising above the noise is mm-hmm. when you do speak out and share your unpopular opinion, share your beliefs mm-hmm. and be like, no, I don't believe that. And that's okay. Like, I feel like that's what draws our people in versus like having to chase everyone. Yes. And I agree. Right. And it's, and like the whole like chasing thing, like that just feels gross even when you you know or like this like energy of trying to get something with your content right like you're trying to get something um and I just feel like it's just like such a yucky energy if that's what your intention is to like go out there and get something or hook someone or you know like just that kind of language it's 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 gross um and I think like and I and I'm a I'm an example of it of of creating content and stand and this is the other thing too like you really have to stand for something like you you know when I talk about owning your weirdness like whatever it is that makes you a bit different and a bit weird like you know I have a girlfriend who for the longest time you know um her and her family hunt and she was like not that it has anything to do with her business but she just was like I didn't want to share it because I just felt like you know someone's going to judge me or it's like embarrassing or whatever right and that's just one example so you have to kind of like you have to stand for something because it is noisy out there and the only way you can stand for something is if you really turn tune into what makes you different from everyone else and we all have something that's different right like I talk about chat GPT and how I'm like a grandma and I think it's stupid right and just before we started recording you were like okay this is what I use for my show notes right and I and and to me I find that really interesting because um like I'm always curious how people use it because for me like as a copywriter it's not a super useful tool because I can write so much better than the robot but for someone else who doesn't have this experience um you know like yeah it's it's a useful tool yeah so that's you know those just examples but um yeah you kind of have to you have to own your stuff Right. And that's hard to do. I feel like so many Uh of us are afraid of being seen. And it's really that Uh ego that's getting in the way because we're afraid of being judged. That's like primal. Like we want to be accepted, right? But in Uh order to stand out, we have to be willing to be seen. We have to get out there. And like you said, stand for something. How Uh have you been able yourself and with your clients, how do you move past that like fear of like, oh my gosh, I know I need to do this. I know I stand for something, but it's scary. It is Mm -hmm. scary because I know there's people that are going to unfollow me when they know I stand for this. But deep down, I know that's what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's often like a permission thing. It's like you have the permission to show up in this way, right? And I think so most of my clients come to me because they're just overthinking so much of it. So a lot of it is just like a permission, like you, you know, and it's, it's so funny, like, and I say that's a lot, like nobody is watching you as closely as you think, like nobody cares because they're worried about their own stuff. Yeah. Right. And I use this example all the time about like, I used to teach yoga. And so I always wanted my husband to like, come to one of my classes that I was teaching or, or at least just come to a yoga class with me. And he, and he'd always say like, but I'm not good at yoga. I have to get yoga, get, get good at yoga. I have to go to the yoga. I just was like, nobody gives a shit. Nobody's looking at you. Everybody's worried about their own downward dog and nobody's looking at you and nobody cares that you can't touch your toes. Right? Like, so it's the same sort of thing. Um, yeah. Like chances are you're, you're probably not going to repel as many people as you think. And who cares what like your neighbor's uncle's hamster's things you know what I mean like who cares um like in the long run who cares yeah like nobody's gonna like no I don't think anyone's gonna like come after you and you're not gonna die if you send an email about 
whatever it is that you're passionate about. Like no, you're not going to die. No one's going to die. Right. Right. <laughs> and that's that drawing in. Yeah, exactly. And that's drawing in those aligned clients, those people that mm-hmm. you want to work with. And I think that's what we forget. We're trying to be right for everyone, but it's like, mm-hmm. do you want to be right for everyone? Do you want to be a good fit for everyone? Cause no, most of the time that's what draws in those unaligned clients that you're like, I really do not want to be working with this person. It's just mm-hmm. heavy. It's icky. It's gross. It's just draining, but really having just that like inner self acceptance, like you said, giving yourself permission. Mm-hmm. That's key. That is so key. And it's hard. And I think it takes practice just in showing up over and over and over and over and just detaching from the outcome because it's like, okay, this is me. I don't have to do anything. And that's the really cool part about running my own business is I get to choose. We get to make the rules as entrepreneurs. And I think we're always giving that power away because like you said, we're shooting our lives away. I'm interrupting this episode to share an incredible networking opportunity that happens every single Monday at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Join us for Coffee Talk and meet and collaborate with other mompreneurs just like you. Networking has grown my business by leaps and bounds, and I would love to share this opportunity with you. All the details can be found in our show notes. Now back to the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know, and that's what I love about you. Cause you're always like, you can do it however you want. You don't have to do it like this. Right. Like we talked about yesterday. I was like, do I have to put makeup on for this? And you were like, well, you know, I do record video, but I don't really use it even though people tell me I should. Yeah. Right. Like, and I, and, and that's what's, you know, that's why I'm such a fan of you. Cause you're just kind of like, well, I'm doing it this way, even though this is what works for me. And that's all always the advice that you give me. You're always like, well, you don't have to do it that way. You can do it however you want. Right. Um, but yes, it is like, it is scary. Right. And I also talk about this with my clients, like this line of vulnerability, vulnerability. I don't know why I can't say that word. Like you kind of have to decide where your line is, right? Like what you're willing to share and what you're not right. Like, like you remember the days of like Facebook when someone would write like this super vague status, and it would be like, what's wrong? Is everything okay? Right? <laughs> like, right, right. So, or you see like those prayers, please. It's like, okay, are you okay? Are you dying? Is someone dying? Like, yes. What's happening? Stop being vague. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So I feel like, you know, if you're going into that sort of territory, like you have to, you have to check in with yourself and be like, am I putting this out there because I want attention? Am I putting this out there because... Like, I feel like this is going to teach someone something. Am I putting this out there because, you know, I had a fight with my spouse about something like you kind of have to check in with that energy. Yeah. So you have to decide like, you know, like for me, like I talk about my kids, but I don't show, I don't share pictures of my kids. Same. Right. So same. So, you know, like there's lessons that I can, you know, I can, I sort of take from parenthood and motherhood and, and, and find a lesson and make it work for my audience. But I'm, I don't say their names and I don't share pictures. Um, You know, for someone else, maybe it's, you know, like you don't have to share pictures of yourself in a bikini. Do you know what I mean? That that has nothing to do with your, your, with your audience or what, or what business you have. Um, Or you don't have to talk about some sort of like, I don't know, trauma that happened to you like you have to decide where your line is um because there's no sense in sharing stuff that you're just like not comfortable with um but I think this sort of like you know and and Brene Brown talks about this a lot if you've read any of her books right like she talks about sort of like this this building connection it does take some vulnerability um and that's really what our content is about, right? Like we're trying to build connection. We're trying to build community. Um, and so I think you can't, and I, and I think that's where, you know, share, and that's where that sort of authenticity thing comes in too. Right. And that's a word that gets thrown around a lot when it comes to content. And sometimes like it doesn't even mean anything anymore. Um, and I'd like to think there's been a move from like super curated content to more like hot mess content yeah yeah (laughs) especially among moms right yeah because so many of us like we just don't 
we've we're like operating these silos right like and we just none of us want to feel like we're alone um so yeah yeah and that's the reality of it i mean me like if i see a mom that's like polished all the time that always has her hair perfect that's making all the homemade stuff for the school like to me that makes me feel bad that makes me mm -hmm. go down the whole comparison hole and that's just me but i have the self-awareness to realize that so i am not drawn to that person because that's not me i am in a ponytail 99 percent of the time i'm usually on day like five of dry shampoo because i just <laughs> like to me that's not a priority and mm -hmm. i'm just showing up as me and i don't have to justify it to anyone like i don't have to justify it. like i won't show my kids faces on social media i have very personal reasons for that. And I don't owe anyone an explanation because I'm so clear on, okay, I do know where that line is. And that is something that like, you are so good with at pulling out from people is like really how to go from that vague messaging to like being super clear on like what you're trying to communicate. Because I feel like a lot of us we make things too fancy. We really like get into it. And then by the end of it, everybody's going, I don't even know what you do. So mm -hmm. what advice, what tips can you give us? Like, how can we, first of all, identify that our messaging sucks? And number two, like start to really clarify what we're doing and communicate that through our words in a way that like it, it connects with people. It resonates with people. I'm interrupting this episode to share an incredible networking opportunity that happens every single Monday at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Join us for Coffee Talk and meet and collaborate with other mompreneurs just like you. Networking has grown my business by leaps and bounds, and I would love to share this opportunity with you. All the details can be found in our show notes. Now back to the show. So I think... Well, one, like, it, nobody is doing something that's sucky. I just think, like, if you're overthinking it, and then that's a good reason to sort of, like, get some help with it. And the clarity thing, it's so funny. Like, I just wrote down, I just had an idea before we got on this call about, like, content. And I was like, the three things that you really need with your content is absolutely clarity um, but I feel like, but even before that, like, yeah, you really need to believe in what you're talking about, right? Like if it's a product or it's a service or whatever, if you're a brick and mortar store, if you're a service-based business, you have to believe in what you're offering. Um, I think your content like has to feel aligned with, so that's where sort of like when you're listening to someone else or trying to sound like someone else or trying to do what someone else told you right? Like if you're, you're creating content from this like prescription place of like, well, this person told me to do it like this. And um, so I think, which we already talked about and the clarity thing. Yeah. I think that's where people struggle the most. Um, and, and I'm guilty of it too, right? Like sometimes I just get this like burst of inspiration. I'm like, oh, I'm going to share this. And it doesn't really have anything to do with what I offer. Um, so I think you just have to keep coming back to, um, it, like it's, I hate the word elevator pitch, like the term elevator pitch, it's just such a stupid word, but you kind of have to practice that. Right. And, and, and keep practicing it and practice it in front of other people. And, um, you just, and I think it just comes from, from practice and, you know, and I like, you just keep practicing it and that's, you have to figure out what you offer, why it's different and who it's for. And sure, like you can go down this whole thing of like client avatar and whatever, you know, I don't, I don't think you have to get so crazy about it. You know, like I have it in my head who, who my stuff is for. Um, if you want to write it down, you can. And, it, and it's also, it changes over time too, right? Like our businesses like this, you know, this is my business right here. So it changes you know, as I learn and grow, my business is going to yes, and like, it keep growing. 
It mm-hmm. should, because, you know, looking back at my journey, I'm not the same person I was, I mean, even a year ago, mm-hmm. we just talked about this yesterday. Like, look mm-hmm. at the evolution over a year, compare yourself to where you were a year ago. And again, it goes back to like, you get to decide, but when you're so mm-hmm. super clear on those three things that you just said, the what, the why, and the who, everything else just falls into place. And yeah, you're right. We do overcomplicate it. Every single one of us overcomplicates it. That's why I think it's so important to reach out to others and be like, hey, you know, here's how I'm introducing myself. What are your thoughts? Say it out loud. Do it. Put in the reps because until you take action, you're not going to know how it feels to say that out loud over and over and over. Or, you know, when you're in different situations and, you know, your quote unquote elevator pitch, if you're speaking to someone that's in a different audience, they're going to look at you and go, huh? Like, what What the heck are you talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think, um, and this is, I feel like this is something we were talking about yesterday too, like this whole entrepreneurship thing, like it's not glamorous. No. It's not, no. like, and you think it's going to be, but it's not. Like, there's a lot of, like, rejection and failure and trying stuff. And I think it's the same for your content too. Like, and like we said, nobody's looking as closely as you think. So you have to start somewhere. Um, You know, if you go live on whatever platform and you mess it up, who cares? Yeah, It's not that big of a deal. Like nobody's watching. Like think about when your kids learn to ride a bike or whatever, you know, or like, I don't know, climb a tree or whatever. Like they got hurt. They got scraped knees. It doesn't really matter. You just keep going and nobody is nobody is like judging you nobody's like oh my god look what she did ah oh. you know right. like no, right. nobody cares right. so it's some you know all of it is kind of an experiment um so even if you know you write an email and it's got spelling mistakes or it's not clear or you know and sometimes i work backwards like sometimes i like have a story you know like i broke my toe and the way I broke my toe is like really dumb. I dropped my phone on my toe. So it's like super stupid. Like it's not even a sexy story. So I'm kind of like, okay, here's this like stupid story. And this is like a, you know, using storytelling in your content. And I'm like, how can I engineer this backwards and have some sort of lesson out of it? Right. Um, so sometimes I do that or like some, you know, like our kids, like they're teaching us stuff all the time. They're like little triggers. So yeah. sometimes I'm like, <laughs> right? Like my son woke me up this morning at 5.30 singing songs to me, jumping on me. <sighs> anyway, so I'm kind of like, you know, and and I was really proud of myself that I actually set the the coffee machine like the night before because I never get that done, right? And, and so then he woke me up so early that the coffee machine didn't even start for like an hour later. And I was oh, like, no. okay, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's great. It's so fun. So I was like, okay, there's something there. Like there's a story there. Like what, how can I reverse engineer this so I can teach my clients something or my, my community something. So sometimes like, you know, storytelling is like the easiest way to do something. And you're really good at the two, like your emails. Um, Like you're always telling stories in your stuff. So. Thanks. You know, and it's one of those things when I just gave myself, like you said, give yourself permission. It was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's, me this is my life this is my mess and guess what like that just shows that we're human like Mm -hmm. i am not like i never want someone to like put me on a pedestal because i'm just like you i'm here to show you like come with me like let's link Mm -hmm. arms like we don't need to be idolizing all these people and i think we forget that that we all started out as beginners you go Mm -hmm. back to some of my first lives they were terrible but you know what (laughs) you get to play you get to practice and nobody's paying attention we Mm -hmm. are our own worst critics and when you can fully embrace that it gets easier. It gets more fun. And you just, I don't know, it's just not as much pressure to show up as someone you're not. And it's, and I think people forget like content is like a creative endeavor. Yeah. Like it's just like a creative expression of you and your business. Like it it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be so difficult. It doesn't have to be so like thinky, right? Like it's, You know, and like I I said, the strategy is never going to go away. Like it's always going to be there, but like the creativity part 
that's the part that you really need to harness. Like the, you know, the strategies like in books and stuff or like whatever. You right? can Google like anything, the, right? <laughs> yes, you can Google anything, yeah. but you can't Google the creativity part. Right. So that's like the part that you really got to tune into. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. We just have to give ourselves permission to just start showing up in a way that feels good to us. Mm -hmm. Be a human and just put it out there. Because honestly, my content that I don't put a lot of thought into, that just strikes me at this world moment, that's what does the best. That's what gets know, the, the likes and saves and shares because I'm just showing up as a human. I'm just so mm -hmm. like, you know what? I'm a mess today. Or you know what? Like, hey, this just struck me today. Just don't overthink it. Oh my gosh, Agreed. Lindsay, this was amazing. Such a great oh, conversation. Amazing. I just love talking to you. Where can we get into your world and learn all the things about you? Um, so Instagram is a great place to connect. Lindsay Smith Creative, Lindsay A-Y. Um, and every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I have like the anti-networking networking group. <laughs> it's amazing. So it's super informal. Like it's really just like a chit chat. It's like a community where we sort of like support each other. Sometimes we whine to each other. Sometimes we talk about tacos. Sometimes we talk about content. Sometimes we talk about um, clients. Um, it's a really great time. It is. It's a super fun call. So I highly encourage you to get into that room. And networking is one of those things that I used to hate doing. And now I love it. Like it's so Same. much fun. And that's how Lindsay and I connected. You know, it's just different networking rooms. Get into the room, meet people, make connections, just be a human. And business gets to be so much fun. Lindsay, thank you so much for taking time out of your crazy schedule to share with our listeners today. Thanks, Amy. It's always a pleasure. Yes, it is. And until next time, mamas, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 